Let's check in with England's own Paul Daly. He joins us now on the phone. Paul, are you there? Yes, I am. What's happening around? Good to talk to you, Paul. Um, it has been a while. It's it's great to have you on the show. So you have been in the news as of late. Uh, c- can we start before you went to Facebook? You went to Facebook a few days ago and said that you've asked for your release from Bellator. Why did you yeah. Why did you do that? Why did you ask for your release? What led to that? It's just been an accumulation of bullshit, basically, on uh, Bellator's end. Um, and it just kind of got to a point where I was like, you know what, if you're not going to keep to your word and if you've been throwing up smoke screens, then just let me go. If I'm not a valued member of Bellator, then just let some other promotion who feels they can make use of me and put me where I feel I need to be deserved, which is which is at the front of a promotion, then uh, just let me go. And the response was, yeah, you'll get it. I said, can I have it in writing? The response that I got was, yes, you will have it in writing. And I've got the whole text message that can screenshot it. I'm not going to name the debilitable VP where the whole conversation went down, but it's a guy that's up there that sits next to Scott at all these big press conferences and stuff. So I thought it was legit. I thought I was free from Bellator and then the next day I'm here and I'm not. Could you tell us, you know, why you're upset, the smoke screens, why you don't feel like a valued member? Like what happened that led you to feel that way? It's a bunch of things, to be honest with you. I think it got sour with Bellator when I didn't take the, the March 9th date that was offered for Bailey versus MVP. It wasn't the, it wasn't MVP himself. It was the date and the timing of it that I wasn't, I wasn't happy with. And for me, you know, I, I lost to Rory McDonald, one of the pound for pound uh, um, best fighters, in my eyes anyway. And I went back in against another highly ranked um, UFC uh cast off, if, if you can say that, in the men's locking, and I won. Now, in my eyes, the next fight for me isn't MVP off the back of that. It's, it's somebody else. And, you know, me and Bellator had a list of names. I put it to them and said, okay, yeah, this kind of timeline works for us, and, and we're going to make it happen. And that's what I thought. Um, and it just didn't happen that way. And then, you know, from there... In recent times, and Scott talking about MVP, and you know, it, it just kind of got to a point where I'm like, this is bullshit. For me, our local team here in Nottingham is not in the forest. Uh, they ain't in the Premiership. Recently, they just beat Arsenal. You know what I mean? If that kind of that kind of shit happens, you publicise it. For me, Bellator didn't do any of that. I beat the Renz Lock, and he was in. He was in all the press. He's coming from the UFC. Blah blah blah. blah. He just went five rounds with Lima. I knocked him out within two rounds. The build-up was great. He was, you know, the whole weighing thing was good. And then for me, I don't feel like they capitalized on that. And they didn't capitalize on it. Then they didn't give me a fight that I thought made sense. And then they sort of like just forgot about me. And then just started talking about MVP. He was booed at his last fight. For a terrible boxing match on British TV against some guy who should be working in, I don't know, working on the doors or flipping burgers at McDonald's. That's what he looked like anyway. And I just kind of got pissed off. As I do, everybody knows what kind of character I am. I, I say what I think, and, and I just said it. So when you asked for your release, you said this, this Bellator executive said, yes, we will grant you that release. You have it in writing. Then what happened? I went straight to Facebook and says, I've, I've asked my release from Bellator. It's been okay, you know, um, and whatever I said, you know, I've got eight months in the sport. I just want to make exciting fights. And, and that's the truth, you know. Before I came on the scene, you can look at my Facebook page. Um, somebody said, I don't know the person who goes to me, but they said, don't let Ariel bait you. And my response to him is, you can't bait you. That's what they said. I don't know what kind of reputation you've got nowadays, Ariel. What are you talking yeah, about? That's what they said. <laughs> bait you. They said, don't let him bait you. And I said, I can't be baited because I always tell the truth. What I put on Facebook is the truth. What you hear in the interviews is the truth. Now, if I, I was telling lies and this and that, then, yeah, I could be put in a trap. But everything I'm saying is exactly how it happened. And it's, it's the God's honest truth. 
Okay. I don't know what these people are talking about. I'm just asking questions. It's I need baiting. one, man. I always thought you was a straight up guy. Yeah, come on. I mean, we've known each other for years. Now. Um, so, so, so then what happens? Because now it seems like you're not released, right? They're saying you're not released. Yeah, now it seems like I'm not released. And I thought, okay, so I, I hit a, a contact that I have a Bellator again. I say, okay, the Rory Lima fight played out. The Gonzalez, Fernando, uh, Fernando Gonzalez, the Larkin fight played out. I'm thinking they're, they're four welterweights uh, of note. You know, now I'll approach them and say, now do you have anything lined up for me? date, a possible opponent or anything? No, we still have nothing for you. And again, my response is, how can you have nothing for me, an idea of what you're going to do with me as a fighter when you're supposed to be one of the premier shows in the world? You have something planned out. You have something that you can tell me. You know, we're waiting on this, waiting on that. It's going to be here, there. But they're giving me nothing. It's like Bellator is kind of shop, shop on, on Sensex. Maybe because it's the place to beat my mind. But either way, you know, my career is in your hands. And I'm not at the beginning of my career. I'm at the end of my career. I, I, there's certain things that I want to do. So just let me know. That's all. That's the problem. They're not telling me anything. And this is, this. I would like to say it's just me, but... Since I've gone public, I've had um, managers of other Bellator fighters kind of, you know, telling me the same thing. Um, so obviously they've got they've got shit they need to sort out over there, but they need to sort it out quick. I feel like over the years you've had a pretty solid relationship with Scott Coker. Have you talked to him at all about your 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 issues, the things you that are bothering you? As far yeah. as a solid relationship goes, me and Scott, we don't talk like I talk. I feel like Scott's always, he, he enjoys the way I fight. So yeah. that's the kind of relationship. He knows he can put me in a fight and I'm going to entertain the crowd. And I, I honestly don't think it's Scott. I think it's it's the TV guys, you know, Paramount, the guys making movies and kids entertainment or whatever. They, they have got a certain plan for Bellator and a real straight up fighter like me might not fit the plan, which is my own explanation to why they like this guy bouncing around in Pokemon hats and doing spinning bird kicks and why they're getting characters like a Rampage. I love him from back in the day, but, you know, he's clearly out of shape and, you know, not, not half the guy he used to be, but that's the only thing that's, that's the only you know, thing that's in my head. They, they're trying to make this fucking movie. When you've got a fighter like me, if he just wants to fight, this is my argument. I just want to fight. They're like, Paul, you know, they, they said some things, whatever. We would pay you well. Like, you fought three times last year. I'm like, okay, that's cool, but it's not about the money. It's not about last year. It's about I haven't fought since September, and I've come off a fantastic win. Probably as far as um, namesake goes, probably one of my biggest wins in recent times and you've done nothing with it. Like, you've done nothing with it. It's like, there's no follow-up to it. That's my problem. And so, when they told you that you were released via text message, do you have any idea why they're not releasing you now? I have no idea. You would like to... no idea. Is, Is it fair to say you still want to be released though? Nothing's changed really from your end? I would love to be released because I feel like you know I've always I've always like you can see from my my, my fight record I've had a hell of a lot of fights I like to keep active I do like to be with a big promotion uh, maybe for the TV exposure the person is slightly bigger but for me I like to be active especially like I say now I'm on the back end of my career I want to keep going I don't want to be sat out fighting twice a year or three times a year. I want to be fighting. I want to be doing what I love to do. So, yeah, I, I would love to be released from my contract. And since I put that, I've never seen a response. Like, you know, for me, I feel there's a lack of respect uh, from Bellator as well. I feel like it's like they don't respect or really value me as a fighter. They know I'll fight. That's why they like me. You can put Paul in a fight, you know, except the fight, he'll go out, he'll entertain but I don't think they value me as far as uh, demand as such. But since I put that post out on Facebook, every promotion you can think of, literally every promotion you can think of, has been inboxing me, has sent a middleman to contact me, 
Does he want to go here, there, and everywhere? And I don't know if the words got round, but maybe that's why Bellis is holding on to me. Like, shit, people are still interested in Semtex. They just, you know, he is a, he is a, a valuable, uh, marketable fighter. People do like to see him fight around the world. These are Russian oligarchs. These are, these are people, the Bai princes, the king of fucking Brunei. I don't even know who these people are. Over in Asia, the big promotion in the USA, just off a Facebook post. So obviously there's something still left. There's something still left in some text that other people see. But Bellator is just fucking blind to it. Uh, does that include the UFC? You talk about promotions contacting you, middlemen. Does that include the UFC? I don't know what I can say as far as my contract contracts concerned. So I'll just use regions and promotions, middlemen, and give you give you an idea. But every promotion, I said, every promotion has been in contact with me via some kind of middleman. Uh, hypothetically, if you are a free man, would you like to go back to the UFC? Do you feel like your your career will be incomplete if you don't get another chance to right the wrong of your first stint there? I think it's a great storyline. Uh, I think the guys at the UFC now will, will, will see that it's a great storyline. I think there's some great fights for me still there at the UFC, but, you know, my, my main objective is just to fight and then be active, and that's all I want to do. And I want to ask you about this 18 months. So in 18 months, you're done? That's it? You put this this hard deadline on your career? Yeah, I just... I just I don't, I don't want to fight much past 35. I'm 35 uh, real soon. And, uh, yeah, I think I, I've been very sensible in the way that I've been in my career. I think I've got things comfortable enough for me to, to go on into that next stage of my life without struggling too much. Um, but, you know, hey, if my Tyson can blow half a billion you know, then anything's possible. But I think my mind's in the right place um, and I've got things set up so that I can step away and look to do other things um, with my life. What would you do? Like in, in around 18, 19, 20 months? Just make more money. Doing? Just make more money. Make more money. Um, would you be involved happy. in MMA or something completely different? You know, I have a gym already. You know, that's something yeah. that, that I... I've I've spent legacy in Rockwell, um, and I have other other things going on for me. I just I, I like business, and I'm very different to how people would would imagine me to be. You know, um, I'm very very different, and uh, I just like to pursue some of those other things that I, I'm involved with. How many fights do you think you have left? Like in those eighteen months, how many times do you want to fight? As much as possible. As okay. much as possible. How many fights are that? What, 67? There's not many other other fighters, pro MMA fighters, that have had as many fights as I have, as I have 63 or something like that. Not including the kickboxing. I can fight as long as I'm fit and able to. If I had a fight this weekend, I had no injuries, I'll fight the weekend after. That, that's the kind of fight I was since day one. You can... You can look for old interviews. I said, I, I'm in this sport. Obviously, I want to make money and, and, and you know, be able to do it full time. But I wanted, a, I wanted a fight record like those Muay Thai guys. I, I've said that in interviews as far back as 2006. I just thought it was cool. You know, 196 fights, whatever, 157 wins. I just want to fight. I think you learn so much more from fighting than just bumming around and doing nothing or, or whatever. I just want to fight. I'm like old school. So what do you think happens here with Bellator? I, I, is the damage done? Are you not willing to ever fight for them well, again? The, the, there's damage there. The damage is there already. Like how it goes is completely up to them. Um, okay. Obviously, cause I'm on, as far as I'm aware, at this point, I'm still on the contract. So how they want to... How they want it to play out is completely up to them, but I will not be signing an extension. We can go as far as saying that, and I think I have two fights left. So okay. either way, whether they release me now or they release me after these two fights, I'll be looking to do do something else. Do you have a dream fight? Do you have a fight that you would love to have before it's all said and done? There are loads, there are loads of fights. Well, there's a few fights. Obviously, the Nick Diaz fight would be crazy, but... 
you know, he's made a hell of a lot of money during his time on pay per view UFC. And I'm not sure it would interest him. I think he's more interested in smoking weed and investing in those kind of type of companies. Um, but fighting right now, uh, Tyron Woodley, I would love to fight. Um, and I have a lot of respect for that guy. As I said in the recent interview, he's one of the two guys that always credits having fought me. There's not many, many guys that, even as champion says, shit, I thought Paul Daly, he you know, puts me up there, I'll say Paul Daly, I thought more of a dollar for Carlos Cundi. And that's all I'm asking. I just want respect. I've done a lot for the sport of MMA um, worldwide, and especially for the UK. All I want in the last 18 months is to have some more great fights more great knockouts and keep it giving the respect that I deserve. Yeah. There's no other British fighter that has been fighting in America for over a decade. There is only me and he's still fighting if Michael Bisping was done. There's no no other fighter right now that's been fighting in the USA for 10 years or more other than Michael Bisping. And I don't get that. I don't get the credit I deserve. I'm not getting it at Bellator. So... Fuck it. We'll see where we can we can get some respect, make some more money, and put some more entertaining fights. Uh, last thing for you, Paul, and I always mean to ask you about this when you're on, and I always seem to forget. But here we are in 2018. You spit fire all day on Facebook, yet you still don't have a Twitter account. What the heck is going on? It drives me nuts. Why can't we get on Twitter? I know. I'm just not feeling it. Like <laughs> I say, I just you're so good on Facebook. I'm just uh, yeah, I just I just like to keep it to Facebook because then there's only there's only one place people can find me and it, it's right there. I like I like it like that. Uh, so it's never happening. Not for now, not unless I set up a business or something away from from myself that needs the extra extra marketing. But as as Paul Simtex daily, you can find me on Facebook. All right. Fair enough. I appreciate you coming on, Paul. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that this no, has happened. I appreciate the invite. Yeah, but uh, keep us posted, please. And uh, I, I hope you will uh, tell your fans on Facebook that there was no baiting here, that it was a nice, friendly conversation <laughs> between two old mates, all right? <laughs> all right, mate. Nice one. All right. Talk to you soon. There he is. Take Paul care. Daly Bye. stopping Bye. by. Hopefully they get that uh, issue sorted. He is still one of the biggest names in Bellator. And as he mentioned, coming off a big win over Lorenz Larkin, who was victorious on Friday. Um, but interesting comments about promoters reaching out. And of course, UFC, what a story that would be.